I've been a digital nomad for a while, but I always struggled with one thing, and that was to have a almost perfect YouTube production studio for when I'm on the road. Now, recently, we've transformed from being digital nomads just bound by a suitcase to nomads that are traveling with a car through Europe, and that opened up a whole new possibility. And today, in this video, I want to show you my current setup that I have here, which fits in the back of a car and can be popped up wherever I am in whatever Airbnb I find myself. Now, this setup that I have here has been built over years and years and years. It's kind of a patchwork of equipment and it's made to work perfectly for what I am doing with it. First up, I want to share with you how this thing looks when I am actually standing in front of it. And this is what you can see. I have my laptop, I have a monitor, which is the U-Perfect O, and then in the middle there I have the Atomus Ninja 5 with the Atom X Cast module. Right now, this is actually recording my overhead camera, which is mounted up there, and you can see my microphone right here, which is recording into the Zoom F6 audio recorder, and I also am wearing a Rode Wireless Pro audio recorder with a little lavalier that is right here in my buttons of my shirt. And right there in the back between the monitors, you can see the camera, that's the main angle, usually the camera that I'm holding right now, but right now it's a Canon EOS R with the teleprompter in front of it, which I sometimes use, but sometimes don't. Now what you also see is I have this desk right there. And this desk is actually pretty genius because Usually, standing desks are a massive piece of wood and a real hustle to travel with. However, what I found here is actually a standing desk which is cut into pieces so that the top plate can actually be taken apart and transported much, much more effortlessly when packed away into a car. And you can see that by the time lapse here, it's really easy to put together. And I was actually blown away by the way that this is constructed because every single screw actually has a metal counterpart so that you're not just screwing screws into wood, you're actually screwing metal into metal, which I think makes this the perfect travel desk for someone that wants to take it apart and go somewhere else. And I will have a video specifically about this desk on my channel in some time. This desk has actually been a game changer for me because 90% of accommodations that you find on Airbnb, even though they state that they have a workspace or a desk, usually mean they have some tiny little desk somewhere in the apartment. Maybe it's the desk for the makeup. Sometimes it's just the kitchen table, but the desk and chairs are always a bit of a hustle. I can't say that the chair situation has been solved because I am still using the chairs that are available to me, except we also have one of those gymnastics balls. But I have to say, I much more care for a big working desk than the chair, and especially when I also have the option to work standing up. Now the next piece of all of this is lighting. And that actually has, again, been one of the biggest struggles because when you're with a suitcase, lights are notoriously big and annoying to travel around with. And that is not different from what I'm using here. I'm just changing the circumstance that now I have a car which can transport these things. So what I have this time around, when you look at this setup, I have a 85 centimeter softbox right here. This is an octagonal softbox right there. And and when I go into the back of this whole thing, you can actually see the tiny little light that's attached to this massive softbox. And that has the effect that even with the light being super tiny and relatively easy to travel with, the softbox actually makes the nice even spread of light that then is the one that I want. Because I don't want these small lights, I want something that is really nice and big and soft. So that's one of the lights. But I actually have a secondary light, and that you can see right here. And this is actually the same light that I'm using for the big one right there. And that is the iFootage SL1 130BNA, also called the Anglerfish model. And in this case, it has a focusing lens with barn doors in front. 
the effect that this one gives me is that I'm actually shooting it right there into the ceiling. And the idea behind this light for me in this setup is actually that because I'm shining it right there and I'm focusing it on the ceiling, it actually bounces back down so that I get a bit of a hair light going right here. Now this is obviously not ideal, but it was the best way that I found for this particular room to work with because I can't get the light far enough back behind and sideways that it's not in the shot, but also shining straight at me from behind. The cool thing with these two options for light sources is that now we can also use other light formers. And I, for example, have also a small rig lantern. And that one Nicole often uses in her work for the yoga live streams, where she wants to have a nice even wraparound light for all of what she's doing. And that's really a great use case for these light sources right there to be able to illuminate a whole room very nice, soft and evenly. Here in this setup, I wanna have the more directed front light. I don't wanna have as much spill. I wanna have a little bit of darker tones in the background. And that's why the octagonal software that you see in front of me right there is the one that I am choosing for this particular setup. To round all of this up, I actually also have this little tiny camera right there, which is giving me this little behind the scenes angle. And that is a Opspot Tail Air. And that is actually a remote controllable NDI multi-purpose camera, especially for live streams, but also for recording the stuff that I'm doing right now. This could even track me when I'm walking around, but right now I haven't set that up for this particular use case. And then at the end of the day, this is what I see when I am actually speaking into the cameras that I have in front of me, above me and behind me. And then I have, depending on the needs, set up the different monitors to show me either the images off the different cameras or I have it set up so that I can actually work on the computer and showcase something that I want to be showcased or I can even live stream with this whole setup. So this is the state of my on the road YouTube production studio and work environment as I am traveling through Europe. We're currently in the process of taking it all down, but I wanted to document this to be able to remember for one, how the state evolves over time, but also to show you that if you want to be mobile, you can do that even with a standing desk, considering you have something like a car to transport these things. But the topic of car location independence slash nomading is actually something that I will cover more on this channel because I think it actually is transforming the way that we are able to do the work that we want to be able to provide while also having the quality life that we prefer to have as we are traveling through Europe, right now Italy, and then later on probably also France. And next year, maybe Spain. So wrapping up, if you have any questions about the setup that I have right here, any of the pieces of equipment that are used in this setup, or any questions about how to build a setup like this, but without the prior history of pre-owned gear and you wanna have the perfect one right from the get-go, then I have a couple of links in the description below where you can find my Telegram group as well as my consultancy offer where I can help you build something like this and choose the right tech from the get-go and be optimized so that you don't have to fiddle around too much, be able to see yourself on big monitors, live stream or record and do all of that really easily. Now with all that said, I hope you found this video helpful, inspiring or at least interesting of how a YouTube studio, which is also travel-ish friendly, can look like and I'll see you in another one.